questions for reflection. The very evil which led to Solomon losing the kingdom, Jeroboam now also commits. He sets up golden calves and establishes idol worship. He feared that the hearts of the people would return to their master, thinking with a darkened mind that he would be able to keep his portion of the kingdom in this way, he institutes idolatry. Now notice the progression. His efforts to cling to power lead to idolatry, and his sin then ensnares the whole people and brings down the wrath of God. We can hear these stories and think we're immune. After all, we don't build statues out of gold and worship them, right? Wrong. Hear these words from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and I quote, Idolatry not only refers to false pagan worship, it remains a constant temptation to faith. Idolatry consists in divinizing what is not God. Man commits idolatry whenever he honors and reveres a creature in place of God, whether this be gods or demons, for example, Satanism, power, pleasure, race, ancestors, the state, money, etc. Jesus says you cannot serve God and mammon. And the Catechism continues. Many martyrs died for not adoring the beast, refusing even to simulate such worship. Idolatry rejects the unique lordship of God. It is therefore incompatible with communion with God. And it continues. Human life finds its unity in the adoration of the one God. The commandment to worship the Lord alone integrates man and saves him from an endless disintegration. Idolatry is a perversion of man's innate religious sense. An idolater is someone who transfers his indestructible notion of God to anything other than God. Where are the idols in our own lives? In our responsorial psalm, David helps us to understand this even more. Recounting the idolatry of the people of Israel at Horeb, he doesn't simply point out their sin, but repents himself in these words, quote, like our ancestors, we have sinned. We have acted wickedly, guiltily. Our ancestors in Egypt never grasped the meaning of your wonders, end quote. Have we grasped the wonders of God? Is he the very center of our lives? Our gospel passage presents the second miracle of the multiplication of loaves and fish. This time, it's 4,000 people. But once again, not only is it a physical miracle, which it is, but it's intended to teach the disciples, and that includes us, about how we are to live our lives as contemporary followers of Jesus Christ. First, we're to respond to the need of people with compassion, as Jesus did not with the mentality of scarcity, but understanding what I like to call the economy of heavenly scale. The heart of Jesus is the model for how we are called to inform our own heart, our own decisions and actions with true and living faith. Next, we're to realize that if we simply place what we have in the hands of the master, he multiplies it and then gives it back to us to meet that need. He is still alive, walking with us. And he invites us to be a part of his ongoing ministry. Do we really believe this? Do we live as though we believe this? <laughs>